Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell, and I did put up a video yesterday, but I put it up earlier, and I decided to do a second video to talk about my last two full days in San Diego, where I still am. I'm still at the Manchester Grand Hyatt, and geez, what time is it? It is 9.56, which means it's almost 10 o'clock, which means it'd be 1 a.m. at home if I was at home. But I've already done my little trek for the night, and I'm in the room for the rest of the night. I go home tomorrow, and I'm ready to go home. But I thought I would at least talk a little bit about, uh, you know, my kind of impressions of the bits of San Diego that I've seen and this conference. And unfortunately, this is the best light I'm getting in here. Yesterday, the sun was still out, so I, it was a little brighter. But it's nighttime now. I got this little light that's just enough so that I can see the keys if I want to use the keyboard on the laptop. And I've got a light over here in the corner that's kind of muted, but without that light, you couldn't see me at all. And let's face the fact here. Uh, why would a black man need to do a video if you can't see him at all? Don't even answer. <laughs> so, I when last we talked, I think I mentioned that I had gone down and I would had this ice cream and I would had some shepherd's pie and whatever. So, let's pick this up with Wednesday morning. And Wednesday morning, I basically went to the board meeting. I'm in an organization, we call it AHAM, but it's the American Association of Healthcare Administrative Management. And this is our annual institute, national institute, and you get anywhere between 450 and 500 people who show up. And we always have it in kind of a large hotel because we have the vendors who sponsor it. They get to set up their booths and you walk around. And this year we had 73. Now, a couple years ago we actually had over 100, but this time we had 73. And so, you know, you have to have it in a place that has a room big enough to do that as well as a room big enough to handle 400 to 450 people if they all show up for, uh, we do some presentations and we have some speakers, uh, you know, some keynote speakers. So anyway, we started out with the board boardroom and uh, the board meeting, and that went okay. I mean, they had fake eggs. My sister felt like it is. They had some fake eggs, but they had bacon. And so I ate some fake eggs and bacon. There was some kind of weird sausage, this real fat, thick sausage, something like country apple or something like that. It was nasty. And here I was. I'm a soda drinker in the morning. I've never drank coffee. Well, okay, I did for maybe a week when I was 16 years old. Ended up hating it. But I don't drink coffee. I drink soda. They never have soda. So I went back down to the lobby and I bought two bottles of soda. It was $7.50 for two lousy bottles of soda. At home, that would have been two 12-packs. Uh, so, so what are you going to do? But, you know, so I had that. And the meeting went pretty well, I'd have to say. But it turned out there was one guy in the room who supposedly had a Fitbit on, and I had a chance at getting a charger. So I thought. He left the meeting early. He was on the phone. I was going to wait till after the meeting. He left early, and I didn't notice that he had left. And I've never seen him again. I know he's in this town somewhere, but I haven't seen him at anything. I haven't seen him at either of the keynote conferences. I've not seen him down in the vendor's booth. Nothing. I didn't even see him at the dinner tonight. So, so much for that. I'll get to go home and charge it when I get home. And I also have to buy medication because I ran out of my medication. I don't know if I mentioned that. I actually still have my insulin, but I don't have much left. But this is enough that you can't really see it. But this is enough to get me tonight's shot and my two shots tomorrow, and I'll have to buy more on Saturday. But my pills, I'd run out of my pills, um, actually Sunday. <laughs> so, eh, it is what it is. So, anyway, then we had um, the luncheon. Well, actually, they had a luncheon. And I didn't get to go to that one because it's for a specific group of people. So, I ate in the hotel because... I wanted to stay close enough so that I could go to see the award ceremony as well as the first keynote speaker. So I ate in the hotel lounge. They have kind of like a sports pub, if you will. And all they had was some hamburgers, but they had something called short ribs. I'm not necessarily a big fan, but you know what? I didn't want a hamburger. So I had the short ribs. That was $21 worth of something that shouldn't have been $21 worth. Let me just say that. Yeah, it was tasty enough, I guess, but, you know, 
really, really wasn't a whole lot of food, but that was $21. Keep your hands on your hats because there will be more stuff. So anyway, we I go to the thing, they give out chapter awards and a couple of individual, individual awards, and then we had a speaker named Dr. Jack Singer. And he's kind of a sports psychologist. He's, I'd never heard of the guy, but he was pretty good. Uh, I have to give him credit for that. But I got distracted at one point, and this is my fault. And I think this is kind of intriguing. I got into, of all things, a Twitter battle. And I got into this battle that I didn't even know was going to be a battle. One of my you know, online friends from home, from Syracuse, had put something up talking about this thing called Gamergate. Now, I've heard some people t mention it, but no one has ever said what it was. And she had put up a link saying what it was. So I'm reading this thing. And one of the things that it was talking about was how there's a couple of women who have objected to some of these gamer things because, you know, they say that they're against women or whatever. And you know what? I gotta tell you the truth. There's some of them that are. I don't know about all of them, but I've seen some of the things on TV. I'm not a gamer. I don't play the games. And I think, you know, some of them are pretty rough about women. But I've also seen the other side, which says, well, the game is geared towards these younger men or whatever. I don't know that, that that's an excuse, but it is what it is. So they talked about how these women have been harassed and there's been death threats. And this followed up a story that I had read earlier in the day or maybe Tuesday night talking about some woman who was going to speak at some university and the university got these letters from some nutcase saying that he was going to basically kill everybody around as many people as he could if they let her talk. What is that? That's ridiculous. So anyway, my friend put this thing up. I read the story. I basically skipped most of the stuff. I got a little insight, but you know, didn't care about that. But I did care about the thing about women being threatened with their lives. So I reshared the thing. And then a couple of people got on there and they just wanted to gripe about the story. And so I said, the only thing I cared about was women being attacked. Well, they didn't believe it. And so they start trying to attack me. Well, you know, I don't back down from a lot of stuff. So I didn't back down. I got sarcastic first. One of them called me a derogatory name, you know, a dirty word, whatever. I didn't like it. So I kind of went after them. And then, the, you know, there was two of them. And one of them said, no one called you anything. I'm sorry. I said, go back and look at what the person said. And so the person went back and said, okay, yes, you're right. That person did say something, but you said something. He said, okay, what did I say? Tell me what I said. Point to something I said. And he said, well, you ignored what I said. I said, no, I didn't. If you read what I said, I said that you can't excuse any of the violence that's being directed towards women who are saying something. You cannot have death threats going against people because they disagree with you. That's just stupid. Well, we actually ended up having a conversation doesn't happen often on Twitter, but it turned into a full conversation. And by the end of the thing, we have resolved the difference. I said, okay, understand, I'm not a gamer, but I read the story because I wanted to find out what this was. And it talked about women being threatened with death. And I said, that's really the only thing I care about. I'm not a gamer. And then they, they got around. They thought I was just dismissing everything else and saying that they were the ones causing it, which I didn't say. So by the end, one of them apologized. The other one said, yes, I can actually see where it is. And said, thank you for at least talking to us about this because people don't always want to talk to us. That's the point of communications. And it worked out well. So, you know, basically two young people and myself, you know, how I got into it, you know, it's really odd, but that's how, how it happens. People sometimes react to things they think you said that you didn't say. And I could have just kind of let it go and whatever, but you know what? They were angry. And... I got a little angry, but I handled it in a different way. So really, it was great communication. So anyway, we get through all that. And then uh, we have the thing where, you know, I get to come back to the room really quick. And then I go back because they, what they have is they have a first timers uh, kind of get together. And if you're a board member, they'd like you to come down and meet first timers. Mm -hmm. I'm a board member, a chapter president. So I had to go meet some people. And they wanted me to meet this one guy who's from New York who I had never met before. So we talked for a while. And it turns out he's from Westchester County. And I've worked in Westchester County. So we did talk a little bit about that. And that was cool. And then we went to what they call the, they call it Exhibition Hall, which is where all the vendors set up. So I schmoozed. I went through, talked to a whole lot of the vendors, got some candy. Didn't get a bunch because they didn't have a lot of candy. Got some tchotchkes and, you know, different things like that. I got a, a dog, you know, a stuffed dog of some kind. And, you know, that was pretty much that. So that ended and 
while I was there, someone asked me if I would like to be invited to a party later on. Uh, I don't know. What kind of party? They said, well, we're going to be raising money for Make-A-Wish Foundation. I'm a charitable kind of guy. So I said, okay, fine. So they put this purple thing on my... Oh, here we go. They put this on my wrist. They said, this is your ticket to get in. If you're wearing this, then the guy will let you in. So... It was supposed to be at the Hard Rock. This is what they said. It's at the Hard Rock. I didn't know where that is because I passed it the night before when I was walking looking for something to eat. So, in a little while, I go and I walk all the way to the Hard Rock. Now, let me mention this because I didn't mention this. Before that, I was late getting to the new members reception because I had some time to kill and I wanted to go see the Midway. They have a aircraft carrier. Actually, out here on the bay, it, it's the Midway. It's not the original Midway because that got sunk in the war, but they created another one and they put this thing together. It's the Midway and now it's been decommissioned and it's sitting out there and they've got a couple of planes on it. I said, oh, I got to go see this. It, it's so cool. So I walked over there and it wasn't a long walk and I walked over there and I saw the aircraft carrier. And have you ever seen that picture of the soldier kissing the woman in the streets of New York, you know, where they come up? It turns out they didn't know each other. Uh, today, that would be harassment. But, you know, it was an iconic picture. Well, it turns out they named that Unconditional Surrender. And they have a statue, like a 30-foot statue of that there next to the aircraft carrier, which is really cool. And they also had in this exhibit of Bob Hope talking to the soldiers. You know, some of you young people have no idea who Bob Hope was. But Bob Hope basically went to all the wars entertaining soldiers. He would take these movie starlets with him and singers and dancers and whatever, and they would just put on shows for soldiers who were on the front lines. It was just amazing bravery for this guy. Um, so anyway, they had a tribute to him, and they had some of his routines being played out, and I thought that was kind of cool, too. I mentioned that because when I went back to the hotel, I did what most guys do, which is I decided to take a different route because I thought it would be quicker. <laughs> I got lost. So I, I made it back to the hotel 15 minutes later than I was supposed to. Had to come up to the room, wash up quickly. So I was a little late, but who cares? So I throw that in because now it's later. I'm ready to go to the Hard Rock. So I get out there and I start walking and my legs are killing me. They just hurt really, really bad. And I said, oh, God, I got to make it there. So I make it to the Hard Rock Cafe and I look in and I don't see hardly anybody. So I go in and the guy says, oh, welcome. I said, yeah, hi, I've got my little purple thing here. I'm looking for my party of people. He says, no, not here. Maybe you mean the Hard Rock Hotel. There's a Hard Rock Hotel? He says, yeah. I said, how far is that? He says, well, maybe 10 to 15 minute walk. I said, oh, no. What are you going to do? So I walked more. <laughs> Luckily, it was just a straight walk. I had to stop at a whole bunch of lights. And, you know, once I get going, I'm usually pretty good. I'm listening to my Harry Potter book. Yeah, I'm listening to my Harry Potter book. Don't judge me. I'm listening to my Harry Potter book while I'm walking. And, you know, people just getting on my nerve. And I finally make it to the Hard Rock Hotel. I go inside. The guy tells me, oh, it's up on the fourth floor. I go up to the fourth floor. I get out. There's a party going on. Hey! I said, okay, you guys have food, right? No, we only have dessert. Okay, I haven't eaten since noon. I need food. So they said, well, go downstairs. The, the cafe is still open. I said, what cafe? I said, well, there's a Hard Rock Cafe. It's right downstairs. Turns out there's a cafe. They don't call it Hard Rock Cafe. It's called MJ's. I don't know why. But they were playing music from the 70s and 80s. I was fine. There was nobody in there. But they were still serving food. So I went in, bought an omelet. You know, soda, ate most of the omelet, didn't eat it all because I said, well, there's dessert upstairs. So now I go back to the party and they got a guy who calls himself a performance artist, performance artist. And what he basically is, he's a, he's a artist. He's not quite a painter, uh, but he's an artist. And what he's got is he's got his, well, he's got paints, but he's not really like painting with a brush or whatever. And he did these paintings. He did one of the Rolling Stones. Uh, it was like four corners of Rolling Stones, which is really, really cool. And I took a picture of it. And then he did one of the Beatles. 
And he did the Rolling Stones in about 22 minutes, and he did the Beatles in about the same length of time. And they auctioned them off uh, for people, and you, you bought tickets. And they were looking for at least $20 donations. You got 20 tickets. So I bought 20 tickets. Didn't come close to winning anything. So anyhow, I'm up there, and I go over to their desserts. And these little petty four things. I hate petty four things. They're just always nasty. I got one. I did taste it. It was nasty. I'm thinking, really? This is dessert? I went downstairs, ate an omelet that wasn't necessarily great. It was okay, but, you know, it wasn't great. So that I could come up and try to eat this? Eh. Still, it was a party. I talked to a couple of people. But in general, I basically went over and I sat down and I just kind of chilled. Because, you know what? My feet hurt. My legs hurt. And I was tired. Because at home, by the time it was time to leave, it would have been 2.30 in the morning. Ugh. And here's the thing. There's a lot of homeless in the area, downtown area of San Diego. It's, it's very interesting in the fact that you got these super high-class hotels. You have these buildings where people are paying, in essence, a million dollars a year to rent these super huge apartments downtown. They have all these downtown stores and restaurants, the Gaslight area, supposedly 125 restaurants. There's tons of restaurants and little parties and little bar things or whatever. Things that overall, it's not my style, but still, you know, they have all this stuff. But they also have all these homeless people. Some of them were begging for money. Some of them were just sleeping right in the middle of the sidewalk, just wherever you could get it. I'm not really used to kind of seeing that kind of thing. And it's just so odd, once again, that you've got this kind of wealth and you've got this kind of poverty right next to each other. I had to deal with that back in 2009 when I was working in Manhattan. And it sounds odd to say that half a block away from Madison Square Garden and 7th Avenue, where you've got all this richness, you have this mission where you have all the poor people who come and basically sleep wherever they can find a spot in front of the mission because when it opens at 6.30 in the morning, they get food. What a weird contrast, I think. So anyway, go to the party. It's time to leave. I'm thinking, oh, God, I'm going to have to walk all the way back. Everything's hurting. These two other ladies are leaving at the same time. And there's this guy out there with a bike. And they got these lights all on these bikes, and they give people rides. And so I asked the guy, okay, how much is it? He says, for all three of you, 20 bucks. <laughs> we decided to ride back. So we all rode back on this thing and the guy was talking to us and my god their leg muscles must be something strange because I'm not a small guy and one of the ladies with me wasn't small at all uh, but there you go he got us all back he told us a few tales and stuff whatever fine and dandy we make it back uh, and by 12 30 in the morning because I had to get on the computer to do something but now I'm ready to go to bed so now we get to this morning and I'm going to try to tell this part quicker because this has already been 18 minutes. We get to this morning, and I know that the first keynote speaker is going to be at 9.15. And I met the lady tonight, the day before, and she seemed really nice. And I said, okay, you know, I want to see this. So I said, you know what, I'm going to eat breakfast here in the hotel. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Don't do this. I'm not going to say don't ever eat food in a hotel. What I'm going to say is, Ask people how much stuff is before you decide on it. I knew they had a breakfast buffet in a different place. So I go over there, say it's just one. Actually, the lady says, says so how many of you are there? And I, <laughs> just, and I just stared at her. Says, oh, is it just you? And the other two people looked at her and said, yeah, we don't see the others. And she said, I got to stop asking people that when it's only one person showing up. So yeah. So... She sits me down, and I go over to the buffet, and I get my little bit of something. I had them make me an omelet, and I'm eating another omelet. And I got a, one of those little half, those little waffle wedges, like a, a quarter of a waffle. And it was tasty and everything. It was okay. And now it's like, I don't eat big breakfasts anymore. I shouldn't have paid for a breakfast buffet, but truthfully, I thought that's all they had. So I tell the guy, you know, that's it. I'm done. Whatever. So he brings me the check. And it's $29. And, of course, I had to tip the guy. I didn't tip him tons, but I had to tip him. So, basically, breakfast cost me $35 for an omelet and a waffle wedge. What are you going to do? At least this time I didn't have to buy extra soda because they had soda in there. But still, $35. 
So we had the second keynote presentation, a lady named Cheryl Rauch, R-O-U-S-H. And she was very good, and I spelled it because her website is CherylRauch.com. Very good, very inspirational, talking you know, about, about um, mood and positivity and working with other people and such. And, of course, she picked on me a little bit, and that was fine because, you know, this is what I do. And she asked me um, point blank, she says, what helps you stay positive? And I said, and I've written this, I put it in videos, so y'all know I've said this. I said that I figure we all get the choice to decide whether we want to be negative or positive. And if I can be positive, then a lot of other people seem to be positive towards me. And, you know, it helps me feel better. And it helps other people feel better as well. So there you go. Then the next presentation was this guy named Dervel, uh, Devel, D-E-V-E-R-L. I can't pronounce it. And <laughs> he was from Franklin Covey. And he did something talking about trust. And, you know, how sometimes... Uh, you can do certain things to get trust and how sometimes you're just never going to get that trust back no matter what it is but maybe you can keep it from getting worse than it is and we talked about Anthony Weiner he was a former congressman from New York who did some stupid stuff and then he ran for mayor and then when he, people decided to look at him found that he was still doing the same stupid stuff and there you go probably won't ever hear from this guy again unless we hear he's getting divorced or went to jail for being stupid so we had that presentation. Then it was time for lunch, and lunch was just passable, you know, more hotel food. And then I decided to skip the next thing because I was just tired. So I came up to the room, and I just chilled after printing my ticket so I could go home tomorrow. And then the final uh, presentation, lady named Judy Viezi, V-E-A-Z-I-E. And I've known her for years. I've seen her quite a few times. Uh, she's spoken to my group in Syracuse, and her son lives in Buffalo. So, you know, we, she gave a presentation talking about uh, conversations these days, uh, what they call the small bite communications. And it's talking basically about how um, boomers and millennials and Gen X and all these people try to communicate with each other, and, you know, whether it's email or text messaging or even um, uh, video conferences and how things can get messed up and whatever and she gave some tips for how people can try to communicate some and what was funny is that her computer went down <laughs> during the presentation and she says well, here I am talking about technology and the computer goes down and I don't know how to fix it and so they got someone in there and he fixed it she said what happened he says absolutely no idea so that's funny so then that was finally over. I got to come upstairs again and relax a little bit more. And we had the what they call the president's reception, which is still with all the vendors. And I'm talking to these people. And let me tell you something. Vendors are not stupid. There are just so many attractive women who you sit there and say, do they really work for this company? Or are they doing like the old computer shows and they're just finding pretty women? I found out last year that some of the companies actually just do that. They hire some women, just train them enough so that they can talk to someone, but they don't really know anything about the company. In this case, it seemed that all the pretty women that I did talk to, along with everyone else, they all actually worked for the company in some fashion and they all knew what they were talking about. There you go. Then we have the big dinner. Now, my problem with the dinners has always been that they redo the award ceremony that they do on the Wednesday before the first keynote speaker. So this time I ate some food. It was okay, not bad, but once again, they had those pedophores that they called this dessert. I'm sorry, San Diego, dessert is not pedophores. Dessert is cake or brownies, maybe even ice cream, cobbler, dessert. It is not pedophores. I got one anyway. It was nasty. I knew better. So... I ate my food. I was talking to this woman about blogging. She wants to be a blogger. All right. This is what I talk about. So we were talking about blogging. They start this awards thing. A couple other people who were at our table wanted to hear the awards. I'm thinking, weren't you at the keynote yesterday? Did you miss this? So we go out in the hall and we talk a little bit. And I'm telling her about blogging and hosting and getting domain names. And then she says, well, I better go back inside because my boss would probably be wondering if I'm in here talking, whatever. And, you know, I hate the word boss. I wrote a blog article about that long time ago. I've never called anyone my boss. Didn't like it when anyone called me their boss. Absolutely hate that term. But, you know, people use it. There it is. So I said, I'm not going back in. 
Matter of fact, with what they put in there, I'm going back and I'm getting ice cream at Giardelli again. So I came back to the room, didn't have my card key, went back down to the lobby, had them give me a new key, came back up, got in, got my phone, got my earphones, and I walked once again all the way to Fifth Avenue just to get ice cream and walked past some homeless people. But it's a Thursday night, which means there's a lot more people out there, a lot more short black dresses and short white dresses, and a whole lot of legs and a whole lot of pretty and a whole lot of noise. But I wanted ice cream, and I got my ice cream, and I enjoyed my ice cream. And now I'm back in the room, and there you go. Tomorrow morning, I will wake up, I will shower, I will go downstairs and say, get me a taxi, and I will go to the airport. And in basically 11 hours, I will be back in Syracuse so that I can have a couple days before I go do something else. <sighs> what a weird life. But this has been fun. I mean, I really have to tell you, it's been fun. It's interesting flying a different airline than what you're used to. It's interesting seeing how people interact with each other. It's interesting how people interact with me. I got to tell you the truth. One thing that happened that I thought was so cool is that when I was down there with the vendors, um, one of this lady comes over to me, and I don't know who she is. She comes over to me, and she says, Mitch, I just got to tell you, I see your posts sometimes show up on LinkedIn, and every time I see your post, I think they're absolutely wonderful, and I always make sure I read everything you say, and I agree with so much of what you say, and I just think you're brilliant, and I hope you continue writing. And I just, well, thank you. And you love hearing that. It's always a surprise, but it's nice. And that happens sometimes when I come down to conferences. You know, I got to tell you the truth. I've been coming, this is my 14th year out of 15 years, and the powers that be pretty much ignore me, pretty much. There's one lady who's been nothing but nice to me, and that's happened here and there. But in general, I'm, I don't fit. I'm not a conformist. I don't play the fake game, and I hear that all the time, and it sounds terrible, but y'all know what I mean. I don't play that game. But it's always interesting that someone has seen something that I've written on my blog or that has shown up in a magazine, or every once in a while someone has actually seen one of my videos, and they say these nice things to me. And that always makes me happy, and it's surprising because sometimes you do these things and you don't think anyone is paying any attention whatsoever. And it just shows you that there's always someone out there who appreciates something that you do. And all it takes is a few fans, a few people to come up to you and say, I appreciate that. And you know what? One of these days I'm going to do a video of appreciation. And we'll see if any of those people watch it. <laughs> okay, almost half hour. It's time to end it so I can get myself ready to go to bed. i got to pack all my stuff, the rest of my stuff. I did some packing earlier. But I'm ready to go home. Ready to go home. So, this is Mitch Mitchell. This has been long. It's been a story. But two days in San Diego. I'm done. Ready to come home. See you all later. Thanks for watching if you watch, and if you didn't watch, then I just talked to myself, but at least I can watch it later on, maybe 10 years from now. Oh, I'm real old and say, I really made those videos way back then, didn't I? Yeah. Bye.